Yes, hello everyone. Welcome to the live stream today. Today we're going to talk about how to get an amazing workout just using a typical deck of playing cards. I used to do this workout for so many years when I worked in like big gyms. I used to do it at home. I did it when I went to school in college. It's a lot of fun. It should be kind of an interesting live stream. I'll break it all down for you. It's really basic. You don't need any equipment. You can use it. You can do it with equipment, but there's a couple of key concepts that, that you want to use when you're doing these uh, workouts. And well, and, and it's good for your resistance training. It's good to put up muscle. It's good for your cardiovascular system. It's kind of like doing those high intensity type workouts, but it could be harder. It could be easy. It, you, can, you can use it in so many different ways. I just shut down the sound on my phone. Once again, sorry for the late start. It's amazing. I feel like I'm running like a whole media company here trying to get these <laughs> live streams started on time, you know, Sunday morning. Let's see who we see. Hey, Patel, thanks for showing up from the UK. 5.30 p.m. there. I know, really incredible. The time differences was kind of cool. Oh, Harry's here. Thanks again, Harry, for showing up every week. I really appreciate it. I'm ready. I found a deck of cards. <laughs> That's great. That's great. That's pretty smart. I wasn't sure how to title this, this video. Hey, Chris is here. Hey, Chris, good morning. Chris from Texas, which is great. This video is great. Good to see you, my friend. I really appreciate it. Hey, well, we got a lot. Hey. Rosie's here too. Rosie's here. Good afternoon. Rob. Hey, Rob. Thanks for showing up. I really appreciate it. Darlene, thanks. It starts and you are talking. Oh, really? So, I mean, that's kind of weird. You know, next time, I, I bet I'll delay a little bit. Because on, on my end, when I'm looking at the software, I wait like five seconds and I start talking. But it's, fu it's funny because Jeff said that last time too that he couldn't hear the beginning. So maybe I'll wait like 10, 15 seconds. Maybe I will go back to using that countdown before we get started with this whole thing. So make sure we don't miss anything. Hey, Debbie, thanks for showing up. I appreciate it. I think you said you may want you may not be able to hang in for this whole thing. You, you want to watch the replay and there's always a replay. It's on the YouTube channel. It also stays as a replay on Facebook as well. So... It'll be there forever, which is great. Hey, Jeff, thanks for starting to start uh, showing up. Cut off the beginning again, but otherwise, then great. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. I, I probably forgot because I was running late. Sometimes when I'm running late, I get a little stressed. And um, if you can tell, I just jumped out of the shower and my hair's still wet. I wanted to, well, whatever. But I'm, I'll wait like 30 seconds before I start speaking in the future so we don't miss out any of the beginning. Because it's important for me to get the beginning going because that's kind of like what the algorithm looks at, like the first sentence that you say. It's really important to say exactly what you're doing. So it also, guys, if anyone, if you know anyone else that may enjoy this, you know, give me a thumbs up, share with anyone you can. Let's see if we can get a lot of people watching the live stream. Okay, so let's go over this deck of cards. It's kind of a cool thing, um, but you really can use it in so many different ways. And there's really just only one slide today, but I did have, I have like a whole bunch of meals. Since I only had one slide, I have like a whole bunch of meals to go over once we go through this whole um, deck of cards workout. So it'll be kind of like a big Q&A session today as well. Let's see what Debbie's got to say. Um, can this chat be be geared a little towards people like me who haven't done much strength training? Absolutely, 100%. I think it's actually good like that. That's the great thing about this, is that we're only doing four basic exercises. You don't need any equipment. And you can modify these exercises to make them incredibly easy to do. Or you can make it challenging. You know, there's so many different ways of doing it. I'm going to break that all down for you. But there's one key concept you have to keep in mind since we're only doing four exercises with the deck of cards. Is that you don't want to duplicate the same body parts from, from exercise to exercise. Like, for example, your arms, like, there's always a weak link whenever you're working out. Like, whenever you're doing a pushing motion, let's say you're doing a push up, which is one of the exercises I have before. Let's say you're doing a push up, right? Most people feel you're doing a push-up primarily for your chest, your pectorals, your big chest muscles. But you're also using your arms and you're also using your shoulders. They call like your anterior deltoid and your triceps. Most of the time when you're doing a push-up is not necessarily your chest that fatigues. It's just shoulders, which are smaller and weaker, or your triceps. So when you're only doing four exercises one after another, like for example, you wouldn't want to just keep on training your arms over and over and over again. You want to mix it up. So if you look at the four exercises I chose for this deck of cards work, workouts, it's kind of going like upper lower. Like one exercise is just body weight squats. And Debbie, they can be super hard or they can be really easy, depending upon how deep you go, how slow you go. We're going to cover all that. 
And then you would go to a push-up, so you're letting your legs rest when you're training your upper body. And it, we kept it really, really simple. But I'm going to break it all down for you so it'll make sense as we go. Hey, Christine. Hey, th th Christine, th thanks for showing up. This is great. Thanks for loving the content. I really appreciate it. Hey, Margaret, how you doing? Thanks for showing up too. This is good. Carla, let's say, hey, Mike. Hey, Mike Cola Fitness. Debbie Roseman invited me to attend. Oh, this is cool. This is great. I really appreciate it, Debbie. So we're spreading the word. And Nicholas is here also from the, from the UK, which is great. Hey, Mike, hope you're well. I ate a little more yesterday, felt leaner the next day. That's good. Hey, hey you know, maybe you need, you need the calories. Okay. Okay, so let's break down how this works. I, gave, I went with a 20 minute workout duration, like the workout should only be 20 minutes long. But like for example, Debbie, this could literally be five minutes for you if you just wanna do one round of each of these exercises. But I think you know maybe 10 minutes would probably be a little bit better. But I, get, I geared it as like 20 minutes and it'd be nice like whenever you're doing resistance training and most of this is resistance training, even though you, you're gonna get a cardio component too because your heart rate's gonna be up because there's not too much resting between movements. You want to create a response and you want you don't want to do it every day. I would say two days a week, three days a week, not on consecutive days. So like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday would, would be ideal. If you only want to do it twice a week, which I think is totally fine, like a Monday, Thursday, a Tuesday, Friday, something along, along, along the lines of that. Because you're creating a response and you want to give yourself time to recover from the workout. Okay. And we're only doing four exercises. And let's go, let's explain more why I picked these. The first one I picked is body weight squats. I think body weight squats, just about anyone can do them. They're so easy to do. If you go to my website, I mean, you can look up, I have some videos on how to do them. There's thousands of videos on how to do body weight squats, but you're pretty much just gonna stand up, feet shoulder width apart, and slowly go down. If you're totally new to um, body weight squats, I like to tell people, visualize that you're sitting on a toilet, meaning that, you're throwing your butt back. Like you're not necessarily letting your knees extend too far beyond your toes. And if you're a beginner, you can literally do a one inch or two inch squat, right? You can also hold on to like a doorknob. You know when you stand between the door and you slowly lower yourself down, they just dissipate, they take some of the weight off. You can do it like that. You can literally have like a high chair or maybe like the, um, the railing of a couch, you can just squat down three inches and just lightly touch the couch. You can make it really easy, or you can do a full squat and you can squat all the way down like below 90 degrees and come up if you're a little bit more advanced. But I do like a slow rep cadence, meaning that I think it's safer, plus you keep more like tension on the muscle if you move slowly, meaning that you want to go down for say two, three seconds, like one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, and then come up for a second. I like that rep cadence, and we're going to use that for all four of these exercises. But if you're not sure how to do a body weight squat, I literally would go on YouTube, just Google body weight squat, squat. Some people use the term air squats, or just put in squats. Sometimes when you put in squats, you don't want to see these guys squatting four or 500 pounds. You want more body weight squats, and just be really careful with them. I like that exercise a lot. The second exercise, let me see if we've got any more questions. Hey, Alexandra, thanks for showing up. I hope you're doing good this week. Hey, Mike, sorry about the funny name. <laughs> That's okay. Funny name, but I'm using my son's account. Hey, John, hey, John, thanks for showing up. Cool, John, that's great. Okay. And the second exercise is just push ups. And once again, Debbie, you can make a push up incredibly easy. I did a, like, a real long, detailed video on how to do push ups. You know, just put in my call YouTube push-ups, which breaks it down from someone who's never done a push-up to someone who's like advanced. You can literally go on top of a kitchen counter and slowly do push-ups. Just think, when you're not lying parallel to the ground, your body weight is much less, so it's so much easier. Or you can do a floor push-up, you can do push-ups off your knees, you can do push-ups off your toes. There's so many ways to make a push-up easier or harder. But the same thing applies, just move slowly through the motion, go down, for three seconds and you can come up a little bit quicker. But why I like to squat the push-ups is because when you're using these cards, you like the whole concept of it, you'll see is like for example, you're gonna shuffle a deck of cards, you're gonna flip a card over and say it's a number three, that's the first exercise squats, you're gonna do three squats. Then you're gonna rest a little bit. We'll talk about that in more detail, exactly what I want you to do. Then you're gonna flip a deck of cards over, maybe you get a 10, which is 10 repetitions and you may have to do 10 push-ups. 
right? If you're feeling good and strong, you may do more for your toes. If you're a beginner, you may do more for countertop. Same thing with the squats and the push-ups. The depth, you don't have to go that deep. If you're really tired, just go down two inches. It's really cool, really interesting, but the nice thing about going from a squat to a push-up is that's, you know, when you're working your push-ups, you're working your upper body. When you're doing your squats, you're working your lower body. So there's no interference there. And then the third exercise, which I love, is planks. Planks is when, you know, you know, you hold a plank off your elbows and toes. Once again, I have another great, like, detailed video on how to do planks on my YouTube channel as well. But it's pretty much you're holding a push-up type position off your elbows and off your toes. So it's not going to involve your upper body or lower body all that much. It's more of a core exercise. It hits everything, but more of a core. And then the fourth exercise I love, because I wanted to add like a little bit of a hit, like cardiovascular component to it, is jumping jacks. And we all know how to do jumping jacks. Maybe you did them in school when you were a kid. You know, Jack LaLanne invented the jumping jack. That's that, that's why they're not calling. That's why they're not called jump, uh, jumping mics, <laughs> jumping jack, because Jack LaLanne name is Jack. He invented the jumping jack, which is really cool. And I really, I, I really love these four movements. You really can do anything. Like, for example, when I used to do this in the gym, like all the trainers years ago, we used to do this, you know, we would kill ourselves with these deck of cards work, workouts. But we would have multiple different pieces of equipment set up. Like we would have a pull-up bar. You know, we, we may have picked six different exercises. We would have, um, I kept it simple, but you can do, the, do this with different, like, spades and clubs for the same number meant different exercise. It can get really complicated, but I'm gonna keep it really, really simple for today. Oh, hey, hey, thanks for showing up, this is great. Hey, Jonathan, whoa, Jonathan's here. Hey, Johnny, great, great to see you, this is fantastic. Thanks for showing up, really cool. Okay, so let's break it down a little bit more about how to do it. Okay, so face cards on the deck of cards are gonna be 10 repetitions, right? So let me show you exactly what I mean. So, for example, if if the shuffle if you shuffle the deck of cards and then you flip a card over, and and you get like a I guess I didn't shuffle it yet, right? And you get say a jack of spades, you're gonna do ten repetitions. But if if you flip a card over and you get an ace, you're gonna do fifteen repetitions, right? If you flip a card over and unfortunately you get the Joker you're gonna do 20 repetitions, right? And then the rest of the deck is just the face value. You could get lucky and you flip over a three, you only do three rep repetitions. It's really a fun, fun way to work out. So for example, right, you start off, I probably would just warm up generally. I mean, I think the jumping jacks are a great way to warm up, but you can just walk in place for like a couple of minutes. You wanna always warm up. And what a warm up means is that you're literally just increasing your body temperature. When your body temperature increases, your muscles automatically become more elastic, right? There's this fluid in between your joints, like all your joints are actually encapsuled. It's not like when you look at the body, like when you see a skeleton like, like behind me, I think I have my skeleton, let me change the camera angle so you can see it. You see when you look at the skeleton behind me, like all the joints are really encapsulated, the joints, and this fluid within the joints is called synovial fluid. The viscosity of the synovial fluid actually changes. It's kind of like when a car heats up, it gets thinner and, and the, the, like the lubrication of the body gets improved when you warm up. So there really is some good reasons to warm up. Plus psychologically, it gets you in the, in the mood to work out. Like if, even if you had a treadmill at home or bicycle at home, if you want to jump on the bike or treadmill for five minutes, it would probably be a great idea, depending on how much time you have, but just at least two minutes. Sometimes even taking a warm hot shower in the morning, that makes the body more or less and kind of gets you ready to work out because you're, you're warmed up. Let's see what we got. I think Nicholas has a question. Mike, what is your opinion on dirty bulking? I personally find it better to add small calories. You know what, Nicholas, we'll talk about this more towards the end when I go over, over the meals, but I don't like dirty bulking. You know, my son always talks about he wants to do a dirty bulk, <laughs> you know, when he graduates college and starts uh, and stops, you know, running 70, 80 miles a week, he wants to start working out, but I, I don't recommend dirty bulking. We'll talk about it more towards the end. Uh, truly a great idea. Oh, thanks, thanks. Great idea, thanks. Okay, so let me show you exactly how it works. And, we, and you can make it as hard or as easy as you like. And I've even put, see, I put a little note on the bottom of this slide, like rest for 10 to 30 seconds. Hey, Super Chat All, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Amazing idea. Thanks for sharing. No, I really appreciate it. Thanks for the Super Chat. It really helps me keep the channel going, the Super Chat, so I really appreciate it. Let me show you how it works. Okay, so you can rest 10 seconds between exercises. You can rest 30 seconds. You can rest a minute. So Debbie, if you wanna just take it easy and you say, you know, I have 20 minutes 
twice a week to do a workout like this, but I don't want to overdo it. First of all, you're going to modify the movements, meaning that when you're doing your squats, you know, you can put even two chairs and hold onto the chairs to make your body weight less. And you're just going to squat down maybe halfway. Don't do a full squat right when it comes to the push-up same thing you're gonna use a kitchen counter you know only maybe go halfway down nice and slow when it comes to the planks instead of planking off your elbows and toes you can literally plank off your knees and elbows makes it a lot easier the jumping jacks you know instead of doing a wide big jumping jack you do like a little half jumping jack a modified jumping jack that's one way to make the movements a lot easier another way to do them is you can also do Whatever core comes up, you can just do half the amount of repetitions. Like instead of getting a joke, it's 20, you can just do 10. Instead of getting like a number five core, a number four, I know, I, I guess the odd cause is a little harder to do half. You only do two repetitions. But it's really a fun, fun way to work out. So this is how you do it. You shuffle up the deck, you know, which is kind of fun. I used to play a lot of cards when I was a kid. I used to meet my grandparents. It's funny how a lot of people, um, that was a big family thing to do, especially... It seems like a lot of Italian families did that. You would come, we would play so many. We would play hearts and pinnacle, all these different different card games, which was really a lot of fun when I was younger. So you flip, you know, you shuffle a deck of cards. You've already warmed up. You flip over your first card. Whoa, that's an ace. That's 10 repetitions. No, an ace is 15 repetitions. So you would do 15 body weight squats, right? And you also should have a clock or a timer on your phone because first you have to pick the duration of the workout. Let's say you're doing it for 20 minutes. So you do your 15 squats, you rest your 10 to 30 seconds, depending upon how hard you want the workout to be. You flip over the next card, that's a jack, that's 10. Now you do 10 push-ups, right? You rest your 10 to 30 seconds, catch your breath, you flip over the next card, queen. That's gonna be 10 second plank. You're gonna hold a plank for 10 seconds. And, and you can make that harder or easier too by saying one 1,000, two 1,000, and you can count to 10 kind of quickly. You see, towards the, when you start getting tired, you're probably going to start counting quickly. King, right? That's going to be 10 jumping jacks. You rest your 10 seconds. You flip the card again. Three, three body weight squats, right? You flip it over. Two, two push-ups. You flip it over. Ace, 15 second squat, 15 second plank, right? King, 10 jumping jacks. Same thing. Ace, 15 squats. Two, two push-ups. Three, three-second plank. Two, only two jumping jacks. It's really cool and it's, re it's really fun. I think it's a great thing to do with a friend or a spouse or who, you know whoever you're with in the house. It's great. I mean, college kids do it in their dorm room. I think it's a fun thing. And it never gets boring. And then you could also always like mix up the exercise. You can add exercises. Like when I used to do it at the gym, we would say like, for example, like spades would be like pull-ups where as, as like maybe diamonds also would you know you can do it like that as well diamonds would be squats you can mix it up but when it comes to choosing exercises just make sure if you want to start changing the exercises just make sure you don't do like arms twice in a row like for example let's say you do have some dumbbells at home or you have those exercise bands like I wouldn't do something like bicep curls and then do something like bent over rows because your arms are going to burn out. You have to go like up or lower or push pull when you're doing this deck of cards workout. Or else you're going to burn out your arms and you won't be able to get a good workout. I kind of like going up or lower. Like some people, maybe instead of the jumping jacks, maybe you want to do burpees. You know, something like that. Maybe instead of doing the push-ups, maybe you want to do with those bands, maybe you want to do a seated row and mix up. But these four exercises, like for example, if you did this for 20 minutes, three days a week, and then I always put on the bottom, like a little bonus, and you walk 30 minutes every day, you will be more fitter. You will be more fit than 95% of the population. You know, I think you'll be more, you'll be so, it's all you really ever have to do for the rest of your life. It's a simple, fun work out like this two three times a day to just being i think in the top top percentile of being fit and, and you know not opposed to not comparing yourself to someone who's a total fitness enthusiast like someone like me who owns a gym has been it's been, it's been my whole life working out my whole life but if i can get all my clients to just do this instead of even coming to me they'd probably be in better shape if they never missed it you know it's, it, it's such a great fun way to work out let's see let's see what other questions we got this is uh nicholas what should my favorite my favorite source of protein is really animal, any type of animal protein. I lean more towards the pescatarian diet. 
you know, because I like getting the omega-3 fatty acids. You know, th those are the essential fatty acids that you can't can't get through your diet. Just like the essential amino acids, like um, like leucine, isoleucine, valine. I like animal protein, and I lean towards fish. So salmon, sardines would probably be my favorite, my favorite sources of protein. Yep, this yep, there's a great card. No, I really appreciate it. It's really a fun, easy thing to in, in to do. It's interesting during the pandemic when we, when I was stuck at home, I was even doing this. You know, when I wasn't going to when I, my gym was closed for like eight months. And I recommended it to like a number of different people. It's really a fun thing to do. It is, and you can really modify. You don't have to go with these exercises. I mean, if you want, if if anyone interested, I can post a whole bunch of um, like four other exercises that you can use. But it's really endless. I know this is kind of like a quick thing, but it's really fun. And there's some other people. There's some YouTube videos on it. They tried. They made it really complex. I think this is the simplest way to do it. Like push and pull, four movements. You're gonna work every single muscle in your body. It can be a 10 minute workout, it can be a 20 minute workout. But once again, the only thing you don't want to do is stay on the same body part for like two exercises in a row. Like, you know, like, you, like I'm saying, you wouldn't want to do like when, you, when you're training your back, when you're doing a seated row, your bicep is your weak link. Don't do like bicep curls number two, seated row, because you're going to burn your arms out. Oh, hey, thanks, Chris. Thanks for the super chat, too. So nice. Chris always gives me super chats. Okay, I noticed that when I do planks, Okay, let me, let me read this crack. I notice when I do planks, if do my count down backwards, okay, when it counts down backwards, I, I always make my time. I love this strategy. This will make things really fun. Yes, okay, this, I like that too because it's kind of like you committed yourself. Like say, say Chris is doing a 30-second plank. He's going to go 30, 29, 28, 27. I think that's great. I like to go, I, I go both ways, but I do find that how quickly you count your reps you know, it can make a difference too. Nowadays with, with the iPhone or whatever phone you're using, it's so easy to have like a stopwatch there. Another cool way to do it, especially when you're planking, because you can actually look right at your phone. You can just hit the 30 second or the 60 second button, whatever you're doing, and do it. When it comes to the deck of cards with the planks, sometimes like a two second plank, it seems like that's too silly. So you can actually, you can also change all that. I mean, you can say, oh, okay, planks, since planks is probably maybe the easiest of these, or maybe jumping jacks might be the easiest, you can just double your numbers. Everything is doubled. So face cards are 20 seconds, right? Aces are 30 seconds. Jokers are 40 seconds, right? You know, a number, you know, a number four is really an eight second. Or you can slow down your rep cadence. It's really cool. I think it's, I think it's a really fun way, a really fun way to work out. Okay, let's see what Deb's gonna say, okay. Is there a best way of doing squats if you have back issues? You know, Debbie, I think squats, because I, you know, like I said, you know, you know my back stories. Every single one of my discs in my lumbar spine is herniated. And I can squat even with weight on my back and all that. So my knee is more of a bigger issue. I think squats will actually help your back because what squats do, this, you may have not heard this term, it's called hip hinging, meaning that it makes you flex your hips, meaning that. When people, when a lot of people have back pain, they like whenever they're bending over, they're not really like, they're not. This is what I mean by hip hinging. See what I mean by, by hip hinging? Like I'm throwing my butt back and I'm hinging at my hips and I'm keeping, I'm keeping my back flat. When a lot of people have bad back, you know, they're afraid to move at all. Like they're afraid to flex or extend their spine, so they're always like, like bending over in a strange way, or they may be lunging to get down. When you squat, you're really strengthening your your whole back. I think it's a great thing for you to do. Just make sure you don't round your back when you're squatting. Like, let me show you this too. This one. Let me go back. See my pelvis here. This, like you want to keep this flat when you go down. You don't want to go into and anterior, like you don't want to tilt your pelvis and have those posterior discs push back. You want to go down nice and flat. But I would say watch some of the videos I posted, or just go on YouTube and put in put in just body weight squats. And I'm sure you can watch an hour long video on it. But it just you know pick pick a couple of five minute videos and watch. But I think squatting will help your back. But Debbie, the best thing you can do for back pain, I think, is probably walking. No question about it. I think walking. Works all those all the supportive muscles in your lower back. Plus, if you want to follow a guy, he's probably the world-renowned expert or one of the world-renowned experts. I've mentioned him in the past. It's funny, Gene used to come to all the live streams. I hope I didn't and it, something didn't happen to Gene. I haven't seen him in here in a while. Um, there's a guy named Stuart McGill. He's a professor, has his PhD from Stanford. No, not from Stanford, from um, 
um, I think in Canada, is it Montreal? Maybe Montreal in Canada, but he's so well known. It's called Stuart McGill, his name is, and it's the big three. And he has these three exercises. I personally do them every single day. One is actually a plank. The other one is something called a bird dog, when you get on your hands and knees and you extend one arm and one leg. And the other one is like a partial type sit up when you put your hand behind your back to keep that curvature in your lower spine. And he also recommends walking. If you're suffering from back issues, I would absolutely do those big three exercises every single day and I would walk. You know, if you can walk 10 minutes three times a day and do those exercises after you walk, I don't think you'll have back pain in, 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 in a few weeks, if not a couple of months. It's, it's real, it really does work. It's really helped my back. Plus there's a psychological approach to pain in general too, which I really wanna do a live stream about it. I've even did some other, um, some other videos on it. Like I think so, unfortunately when you have back pain or you have any pain that lasts for extended periods of time, say it lasts for more than six months, sometimes even when the tissues heal themselves, there's a couple of different things. There's like neuroplastic pain, meaning that chronic pain like lights up parts of the brain that when acute pain doesn't. But when you've had pain for long periods of time, it's hard to like turn off the, it's kind of hard to explain, it's hard to turn off how the brain processes the pain and you can literally still feel pain even though there's no tissue damage there anymore. Um, a great book to read it is The Way Out. That's a great book. All of Dr. John Sarno's books are incredible to read, like Mind Over Back Pain. And it's not necessarily, there's nothing wrong with you. And I mean, I've been diagnosed with TMS years ago. TMS stands for Tension Minor Neuro Syndrome, which talks about sometimes the body can stop the circulation of blood and oxygen to certain parts of your body, which can lead to pain based on so many different factors. But those are all great books to read too. But I would look up Stu Miguel, The Big Three. I did some videos on it too. If you go to my site, once again, my call to YouTube, put in like um, healing back pain. I did three videos or so, if not more, explaining that. I talk about Stu Miguel and, and Dr. Sarno and all that too, which is really great. Hey Carl, how you doing? Let's see what's going on. Hey, this is genius because my, okay, this is genius because you vary your workout, which starts um, routine boredom. Sounds very fun. Yeah, no, it really, it really is a super fun way to work out. And you don't necessarily, like I say, have to stick to these four exercises, but when you pick this, let, let me give you an example of some other ones. Okay, so instead of doing squats, say, say you do lunges, would be exercise number one, which is like a one-legged squat, a little bit more, I say, aggressive than doing squats. Also, Debbie, that could be also an, an easy option for your back, too. If you find that, if you're a little concerned about doing squats, you can do lunges because you can keep your body a little more upright. Right. Instead of doing the push-ups, you can get those. But this is not. That's why I picked these four. But you have to buy those bands, those spree. You know those exercise bands. You can buy them on Amazon for like ten dollars. I love them. You can anchor them in a door, high, low, middle. You know, you anchor it in the middle. You sit on a bench or a chair. You do your rows. That could be number two. Number three. Instead of doing regular planks, maybe you want to do rolling planks, which I love. We talked about that with Jeff weeks ago, where you roll from front to a side, back to the front. Love that movement. And, and that you can go by repetitions, which is great. So you turn over a car, which is eight. You hold the front squat for two seconds. You roll to the side for two seconds. You roll to the front. You roll to the other side. Do that eight times. And instead of doing jumping jacks, you could do burpees. Debbie, I wouldn't do burpees with you because burpees could be a little rough on the back. You can literally just like run in place up and down for the desired amount of time from the car. So you can keep on... You can keep on changing the exercises. Or you can say you could, if you want to get more complicated, you could pick eight exercises and say all the red cards like um, diamonds and, it's, it's a di I don't even remember now what cards is it. Diamonds and hearts are red, clubs and aces, clubs and spades are blacks. And you can say, okay, like pick those eight exercises and say these are the red cards, these are the black cards, and you can really cr create um, a fun, always changing type workout. But what you want to keep the same is keep the duration. You always want to warm up. You always want to determine how long the workout's going to be, whether it's 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And then I would probably cool down a little bit too, which I didn't really say. You should cool down a little bit too. It's nice to ease out of a routine. If you have the treadmill, go back on the treadmill for five minutes, walk around the house just for a few minutes just to cool yourself down too, which is kind of nice too. Let's see. Oh, sure, Debbie. No, my pleasure. I, I hope that answered your question. But, um,. Most people, I mean, the crazy thing about back pain is that like if you MRI anyone's spine, once you're over 40 years old, you're gonna see something. You're gonna see a herniation, you're gonna see a little bit of arthritis, you're gonna see some degeneration. It's just such a normal thing of the aging process. And 
But, the, you know, that's why I, I'm not crazy about MRIs. The only reason why I like getting MRIs, first of all, if you're just in like an insane amount of pain, if you want to just rule out something really horrible, like, God forbid, it's like a, it's a, a, it's a tumor in your spine, something like that. But if the MRI doesn't show anything like that, you know, most of the time when a doctor says to you, oh, my God, look at that herniation, it makes the problem worse because then you really start worrying about it. And they said, oh, my God, I got a herniated disc. Everyone's got herniated disc you know, and, and arthritis and stenosis to, you know, to a mild or moderate degree. You know, I, I, only, I only would take anything seriously in an MRI if it says very severe, you know, on it when it comes to like, you know, discs and, and arthritis and stenosis, things like that. Let's see what Chris got to say. Hey, Chris. My dad had to get spinal cord stimul. Oh, he did. Okay, my dad had to get a spinal cord stimulator for his back, and it took ninety nine percent of his. Oh, that's fantastic. That's really interesting, because I wonder if the stimulator was more of a distraction for the pain signal from the brain, or was it doing something out? Or was it blocking? Because sometimes they go and they just like you know they just you know they burn out the nerve that that innervates that particular spot. Like I say, it's in a. You know, there's different vertebrae in your lower back. Let's say you got an L5 S1, which is one of the lower vertebrae. It's very typical for a herniation. I've got a herniation there. They can go out there and just burn out that nerve intervention so you don't feel the pain, even though nothing was resolved. But that's interesting. Sometimes just distracting someone from the pain can do it. But um, I'm glad your dad's feeling better, better, Chris. That's great. All right, so let's see. Before we go into all the meals, I got so many meals here too. Any um, any questions about this workout? And then, we'll, and then we'll start talking about diet and all that stuff like I, talk, I typically talk about. I just want to do this. I thought it would be fun today. We can always come back to it, you know, if you have any other questions. But I think you got the general idea. It's, it, it's a simple way, simple, fun way to work out. I, I pulled up, I, I did a whole bunch of meals today. Some older meals, some newer meals. Let me see what the first one is. And I try to go with some small, oh, let's talk about this. This is kind of cool. And I also wanted to go with some smaller meals too because I've been, uh, like I said, a lot of my videos on Instagram and TikTok have got like really taking off these short little videos I do about how many calories to eat. But a lot of people always ask me, Mike, I need some smaller meals, some lower calorie meals. So I definitely pick some of those. But this is kind of interesting. These videos are kind of doing pretty well with me. Like now, I'm going to do it again today. Every Sunday, as, as you know, if you're following me, is my OMAD day. Like one day a week, I like to only eat one meal. Within like a one or two hour eating window, that's my low calorie day. I pretty much generally me, depending upon what I'm looking to do, most of the time I'm at maintenance calories. And my rule for maintenance calories is you take your body weight, so you multiply it by 15. That's a general idea of how many calories you should eat for maintenance. Obviously, it's not perfect, you know, depending upon how active you are. So let me give you an example. Let's say you're 100, let's say you're 150 pounds, so let's multiply that by 15. That's 2,250 calories. I think if you're 150 pounds and you're living a normal, relatively active life, you can probably eat 2,250 calories, not gain and not lose weight. You're at equilibrium. If you want to be in a calorie deficit, you multiply your body weight by 10. So you eat 1,500 calories a day. And I like the cycle between maintenance and and um, calorie deficit. Like every six weeks, if you're in a calorie deficit, I think you should take a diet break. You know, yeah, if you've been following me, those that's my whole system and concept. And then keep an eye on protein. Make sure you're eating enough protein and taking enough fiber to make sure you're eating well. But one day a week, I like to make sure I'm definitely in a calorie deficit. Plus, maybe Saturday night, maybe I eat a little bit too much. I didn't eat too much last night. We didn't do anything. But sometimes I go out Saturday night and I eat a little too much. So I think Sunday is the perfect day for me to do an OMAD day. And I like it for a couple of reasons. First of all, I like the idea of being in a fasted state for 22 hours. It kind of de depletes my stored ca carbohydrates, my stored glycogen. You know, when you eat carbs, the excess carbs you eat, get stored in your muscles and live in the form of glycogen. You can only hold so much. The whole, the whole thing you always want to avoid is you never want your muscles and liver to be full to the brim and then you keep eating because that's when all the problems start. That's when you wind up converting carbohydrates into fat. That's, that's when your triglycerides go up. That's what leads to metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, all that. Like if you've been doing this for decades where your muscles are full with carbohydrates, they can't hold any more, you're going to wind up with type 2 diabetes, all these bad things. So one day a week, I like to empty out my glycogen stores by only eating pretty much one meal a day. But it is a pretty big meal, and people are always asking me, well, Mike, what do you eat on your OMAD day? So I've been making some videos on that, and this is what I ate. I don't know if this was last Sunday or the Sunday before. So this is what I had. I'm always prioritizing protein, fiber, and good nutrition. Okay, So I had like a nice big piece of salmon there. It's probably 10 ounces of salmon. I'm going to guess 60, 65 grams of protein. Another general rule is every four ounces of chicken, fish, and meat, about 25 grams of protein. A little bit debatable 
on how much protein you can absorb within one meal, especially when it comes to the OMAD meal. When it comes to protein synthesis, like means like putting on muscle from like a meal or from you know from each individual meal. It seems like the, the, there was a big um, peer review study, like a meta analysis that came up with maybe 60, 65 grams. But a lot of the new research is saying that, you know, digestion slows down. And even though you really can't store protein, there is an amino acid pool, which are, a pool, which is your muscles, even your intestines. There's a great article from examine.com. That's probably one of, one of my favorite websites when it comes to analyzing different studies. And they really went into this in great detail. They're saying, no, you really can take in more protein and even 60, 65 grams. And protein is used for other things besides protein synthesis within the body. You know, skin, hair, nail, connective tissue, digestion, you know, you got, you got the whole digestive tract. So I, I take in a lot of protein when I'm only doing the one meal a day diet. So there's 60, 65 grams right there. Let's see what John's got to say. Hey, John, Mike, uh, on your all my day, which meal are you eating? Okay, yeah, this is my all my meal, John, from, I don't know if it was last week or maybe the week before. And I only do it on Sundays. So I'm probably at maintenance calories because I'm not necessarily looking to lower my body fat too much now. Once I may go into it, I may make a push to lower my body fat right before the, before the summer, definitely probably before my birthday where I'll probably be in a deficit a lot. But this is, um, I like to keep my calories in line for the whole week by just doing all mad one day a week. I think it's a great way to do it. But if I feel like I'm putting on weight, I'll, I'll go into a deficit, you know, whenever I feel like I have to. So this is my Sunday diet. And once again, I'm doing these live streams on Sunday. So I'm busy in the morning. I'm making the slides. I'm just drinking some coffee. I'm having, this is probably, I think, my third cup of espresso today. I'm drinking some just plain, um, you know, unflavored uh, polar water. I already had some. Um, oh, I didn't. I didn't do my lemon. Sometimes I squeeze half a lemon in water. I didn't do that. I didn't do that yet today. I'll probably do that later. After this live stream, I take a nice, um, fasted walk, and then let's see what John's got to say. Just dinner, yeah, just dinner. But this, I wouldn't even call this dinner because it's probably like a late, this is my late day meal. So what I'm doing is I'll be done with this live stream. Say I'm done with this live stream, it's like two o'clock, right? Um, then I'll have another big glass of water and probably do my lemon, probably do my lemon water. Then I'll go take a two hour walk or maybe a hundred minute walk, depending on, if it's raining, I want to walk on the treadmill, but we'll see. Then when I get back from the walk, say it's four, four o'clock, 4.30, that's when I'll have this nice big meal. Because I have that rule where I try not to eat three hours before bedtime. So I wouldn't want to do it late. Plus, this is a pretty big meal for me. You know, we'll go through, we'll break it all down. So I don't want to like eat this late at night and have it affect my sleep. So say I'm having this 4, 4.30. I think it's almost an ideal time to do OMAD. Probably even better if you can do it earlier in the day. Like I said, based on all the other research that I always talk about when it comes to early time restricted eating, how taking your protein and amino acids earlier in the day is probably better for for maintaining muscle mass and things like that. But hey, this is just this is just my lifestyle Sunday. There were times when, you know, my family would come over or people would come over on Sundays and we have a, like a nice big feasting meal and we would do it um, you know, late afternoon ish, which I think is a nice time socially to do it. So we got the um so we got this you know, like I said, ten ounces of salmon, once again, complete protein, high in omega threes. So Nicholas, this is probably my favorite source of protein, 60, 65 grams of protein there. If you notice here though for dessert I had a 2% um, Greek yogurt. That's an additional 15 grams of protein with only maybe 120 calories. So I'm probably, at, I'm close to maybe 80 grams of protein for this meal since I'm only eating one meal a day, you know, which is pretty cool. I eat an avocado every single day. It's a superfood in my opinion, a little potassium, a little with fiber. You know, the adequate in quick intake of potassium is like 4,000 milligrams. I always say most people don't come close. And you know, there's a decent amount of, decent amount of potassium in the salmon as well and in the, in the yogurt. Had some string beans, which is nice, just fiber, almost free calories. Blueberries, I eat almost every single day as well. Low sugar fruit, loaded with antioxidants, the flavonoids, the polyphenols, you know, phenols, all that cool stuff. And uh, loaded with those antioxidants. And just to make sure I'm getting even enough potassium system, only eating one meal. This particular day I did have, I don't know if you can see this, this is that, my, that brand of celery juice that I love. 35 calories, like a thousand milligrams of potassium. So literally between the celery juice, the salmon, the avocado, and the yogurt, I bet I'm well over 3,000 milligrams of potassium right there. Most people don't even like eat, eat 3,000 milligrams of potassium in three days, and I'm getting this in like one meal. Then as a real treat, because I'm not as concerned about calories as I'm only eating one meal, I had at least one row of this, this and this is 88%, if you can see it, 88% dark chocolate low sugar dark chocolate also dark chocolate's really high in magnesium 
you want to eat 400 milligrams of magnesium every day i'm sure i probably get close to half right there did i have one or two rows can't remember i typically have one row of dark chocolate every single day but i may have had two and i love even 88 percent. i know people say oh my god how do you even eat it tastes like chalk i love it i think it tastes great i i mean i have to stop myself from eating too much of it i like it too much but this is a, a, a i think a great example of um a nomad day where your calories um, are you know are not too high getting a good amount of protein good amount of fiber vitamins minerals and nutrients i think it's just a great a perfect way of doing it all right let me close that let's open up the steak i think alex like let's see alexandra okay this is alexandra okay I like everything about this exercise plan except the jumping jacks. It hurts my my yeah you know I, I, uh, my lady lumps yeah you know I mean if, if sometimes if you if you wear like a sports bra which I definitely recommend for doing something like that you don't necessarily have to do that but I would pick some type of movement maybe in your case you just do high stepping high steps something like you want to do something that kind of like jacks your heart rate a little bit. See burpees, you could do burpees because I think I know you're on the young side, Alexander. I think you, you uh, I think you'd probably be okay with burpees. I'm not as much of a fan of burpees because I have seen people hurt their back with burpees. Like I wouldn't want Debbie doing burpees, no way, because it's kind of rough in the back. But you can like just run in place. I mean, even if you have um, any type of aerobic piece of equipment at home, like if you had an exercise bike or you had like a treadmill, you know, you put it on like 10 degrees incline, you get on that treadmill. And you do, you know, unfortunately, if you turn a card over and it's a two, you don't want to do two seconds. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe you something like that. You want to go, you, you say, you can, no matter what, whatever card turns over, you're going to do a minute or you're going to do 30 seconds on a high incline on the treadmill. The bike, though, you can really do it. You can just do like 20 seconds on the bike, like really, you know, pretty, like 90% effort. And and th that could work. Mm -hmm. See what Jeff's got to say. Jeff. I'm going to have to look up the planks. I, I don't think I've done that before. Yeah, look up the planks. I look up, I think I sent you one time rolling planks. But if you go to my YouTube channel, just put in planks, my cola planks, rolling planks. I got some short videos that show you, show you how to do them in just like 15 seconds. And then I have like a real, I did a really long, I may even have been a live stream where I really broke it down in like in great, great detail. You know, the front planks, see, I like non movement exercises for the midsection. What I mean by non movement, and this can be Debbie can be like this is that I don't necessarily like too much like flexing and extending the spine under load when it comes to training the midsection because you could mess with the disc a little bit. I mean, I know that's debatable. Stuart McGill would tell you that. So when you're doing a plank, just think you're not moving, right? Your back is straight. So you're challenging your midsection without movement. That's what I mean by non movement. But even other exercises are non movement exercises. You know, if you see the wheel, you know, when you wheel in and out, when you think about it, you're not extending or flexing your spine you're holding on to it gets a little complicated but what's happening is is like your hip flexors which attach attach to the top of your ilium the top of your pelvis to the to your lower lumbar vertebrae also attach to your thighs and they're yanking on your lower back wanting your back to arch so you have to dig in hard with your stomach to stop your back from extending from say even hyperextending. and that's how you kind of train the abs with these non-movement exercises you know which is kind of cool let's see Jeff says, I've, I've done, um, oh, I don't know. Sorry, guys. I think I lost the screen. Let me see if I can pull it back. I'm using a split screen here. I kind of lost it for a second. Let's see what Jeff's got to say. Okay. I've done Supermans and I don't know. Yeah, you know, Chris, I'm not, I mean, Jeff, I'm not that crazy about Supermans because you're really, really, uh, you know, when you're lifting on a Superman, if, if you guys don't know, is when you lay in your stomach and then you lift your arms and legs off the ground at the same time. You know, so it's pretty. I think that's pretty aggressive. I'd rather you just do one end. I'd rather you just do like lift one side, and maybe go down. Superman's a, it can be rough on the lower back for some people. Obviously, if it doesn't bother your back, keep doing them. But they can be really rough. Like a guy like Stuart McGill, he would say, "Don't do Superman's." That's why he likes the bird dog, which is like doing one arm, one like Superman, and you get into like um, a chair position, like a yoga chair, where you know you're on your you're on your hands and your knees and you're making like a table or a chair, some people would say, you lift your right arm and your left leg in the Superman type thing. It, it strengthens those same muscles in your lower back, but takes a lot of the pressure off the lumbar. I like this, I like um, bird dogs better. That's another thing I would look up, Jeff. Look up bird dogs. I also have, um, uh, you know, essentially I, I did a whole bunch of these workout videos early on 
and exercise. They didn't do well, so I kind of stopped doing them. Plus, I like talking about this stuff a little bit more than like showing people exercise um, technique. But you know, this because there's so many people doing them on YouTube, and a lot of people are doing a great job. But you can look up Stu McGill, and you can even put Stu McGill Superman. I'm sure you'll hear him talking about how he doesn't like him. Okay, thanks, Chris. Another super chat from Chris. Thanks so much, Chris. I really appreciate it. Another nine ninety nine. So nice. Let's see what we got. Okay, for the next four weeks, I'm going to do alternate day fasting. Okay, thirty six twelve. I really want to learn. I, I really want to lean out. Should I cut out my salmon and only eat chicken and turkey proteins? I need some advice to lean out. You know, Chris, I would probably say no. Yes, calories count. I'm assuming you're saying that because you think because the chicken and the turkey is um is low in calories. But I have to say, I think those omega three fatty acids are so important and so good for you for your health. I know. Your cholesterol has gone down so much, and you're doing so well. I do think one of the reasons why, besides being in a calorie restricted state, is those omega threes. I would say, if you want to cut back on on the salmon a little bit, you know, don't do necessarily ten ounces. Maybe do your four ounces, get twenty five grams there, but get the omega threes. Or what you could do if you wanted to, is if you want to switch over to like more like leaner red meat and and, and you know leaner chicken and leaner turkey, you could just take um the fish oil supplement if you want. If you want to go, I can see you doing that if you want to really cut back on calories that way. But I still, I don't want you to cut back on the quantity of protein because if you're doing alternate day fasting, if anyone doesn't know what, what Chris is doing, he's doing alternate day fasting, meaning that he fasts for 36 hours one day and then the next day within a 12 hour eating window, he eats, he takes, take, takes in all his calories, pretty aggressive. But if you want to lean out and maintain your muscle mass, like we said, I wouldn't want to, I, I, I think we talked about you're doing diet breaks and I wouldn't do that for like more than six weeks Then I would just take a break for a couple of weeks. But um, I don't, I, with that 12 hour eating window every other day, I just want to make sure you, you're getting in a, a, enough good nutrition. But if you want to do that, you could, but, but then I would take maybe some a fish oil supplement. But there's also there's something about the fish oil supplements that always concerned me a little bit. A little bit, and if you really look into the science, and Peter Tia talks about it, the doctor from Harvard, um, Rhonda, um, what's her last name? Is it is it Rhonda Kaufman? Is that her last name? Is it Kaufman, or I forget her last name? And she, she she's another one of these PhDs. You know, there is a decent amount of research saying that if you take these these fish oil supplements, that it can possibly, if you if you have the underlying mechanism for AFib irregular heart rate that it could give you a regular heart rate even not large amounts even relatively small amounts of these fish oil supplements but it doesn't seem to be the case when you're eating fish and salmon and sardines and things like that so that's the only thing that concerns me about the fish oil supplements even though I do take them from time to time because I, I think it's so important to keep your omega-3s out yeah and I know Chris I know you're tracking everything if you really want to lean lean out you could do that. Um, let let me know how many calories you're eating on that 12 hour day. I, and I'm curious once again because I know sometimes I'm dealing with so many people. I, I know I know what you're doing, but I, I forget how long you're doing this alternate day fasting. I think it's been a while. I know you lost an additional 25 pounds, so you're probably down 40. I think you're down 65 pounds already. I probably would want you to take a diet break though pretty soon if you haven't already. You, know? you can always email me too, Chris, as well. You know, let's go back to that. Um, where was that steak meal? Here we go. I like this meal a lot too. This is a great meal, I think too. And people, are, a lot of women always say, "Mike, you know, how do I modify it?" I just would eat less, you know, in a way like like you, you have meals for women instead of having three pieces of steak. And this is the most inexpensive steak. I actually made a video of this. So you're doing, so you're eating seventeen hundred and fifty calories, but only every thirty six hours. I don't know, Chris. I, I you know that's really really aggressive. I can almost see you eating 1,750 calories like, you know, every day and then maybe doing like a 24-hour fast once a week. And how long you been doing the um, just alternate day fasting now? I, I'm assuming your weight loss is slowing down now, right? Let's see. Just came off a, okay, you just came off a one-week diet break, which I think is really good. I just don't want you to get caught. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want you losing muscle mass because if you lost so much weight already and I know now you're working out and everything again, you may not have to be as aggressive I definitely don't, I wouldn't worry about the salmon if you're only eating 1,750 calories and you're taking in your 150 grams of protein or whatever you're taking. And I'm just a little concerned that I don't want you losing muscle mass because I know you've been in a calorie deficit on and off for like a really, really long period of time. 
you know. But it really has to go. The, the, the interesting thing, look, look at it like this, because I did a video about this not that long ago on a guy doing alternate day fasting who, and I, I feel like I messed up. I mean, he's one of my clients. He was doing great, losing weight, alternate day fasting, doing really good. And then all of a sudden, at first I didn't realize it. He started getting weaker. Like I can just tell, like we knew, I'm going to make this up. I knew, say he can bench 200 pounds, 10 reps. All of a sudden, he just wasn't able to make his numbers. And I thought, maybe you got a call. What's going on with you? Sleeping? He said, no, no, I'm going to sit. I'm feeling a little tired. And unfortunately, I made the mistake. I let this go on for too long. I let it go on for like maybe six weeks. And he just he just started, then he started feeling, yeah, Mike, you know, I'm just not feeling good. I'm feeling tired. Now I'm, then he started not sleeping well. And I just realized that, you know what? He was in a calorie deficit for too long. There's alternate day fasting has run his course for him. He was probably nutrient deficient, probably on potassium and magnesium. You know, so we put him on just a typical, my favorite thing, 16-8. You know, your typical 16-8, um, two meals a day with a protein shake. Took him about a month. He felt like a different person. Started getting stronger in the gym. He didn't. He gained a little bit of weight at first, and but I think it was all muscle. So that's the only thing that would concern me a little bit, Chris. I know you've been. If, if the fact that you just started working out only a month or two ago, it may be hard for you to tell if you're getting stronger and weaker because when you haven't worked out for a long time, no matter whatever you do, you seem like you're always getting stronger. But if you find that you're just getting, like you just don't have as much strength or energy in the gym, all of a sudden you maybe maybe you're not sleeping as good, things like that. I probably want you to first really do two weeks at maybe like 2,000 calories a day really taking crazy good nutrition and then maybe do alternate day fasting maybe just once a week or you know we'd have to figure out something that's a little less aggressive for you but i know i just don't want to trigger you back into eating a lot obviously and not like carb craving and things like that i don't think you'll ever would, will go back to a high carb diet i'd always want you because you were type 2 diabetic always in that like me more that moderate to lower carb type diet and you're so good at counting calories and you're so disciplined. We'll have to, you know, this is when things get tricky, you know? Like um, when you've done so well, like how do you keep it off? And now you want to put on muscle. It gets a little bit more technical a little bit. But we'll figure it out with you for sure. Let's see. Hey, hey, thanks, Alex. And that's a great thing. Hey, I'm getting a lot of super chats today. This is really co cool. I really appreciate it. Let's see what you got to say. Okay, I'm 27. And I'm getting a stationary bike for car. That's great. So that's what you can do, um, Alexander. Use the stationary bike if you're doing the deck of cards workout instead of doing the like the jumping jacks or, or instead of doing the um, like burpees. That's a great way to do it. Plus, I find that the bike is really easy on your knees, so you can jump on a bike and just go right to it. You know, maybe go easy for for five seconds and then maybe do like a thirty second all out. So you can do something like that for the deck of cards, and you can maybe make it a little bit longer on the bike. Maybe you say you're gonna double it. Like for example, if you get like an eight, or you can say no matter what, you're not doing less than twenty seconds, right? And just and just do it like that a little bit more. Well, it should be a little bit easier. All right, Rhonda Patrick, that's right. Yeah, you're right, Alexander. Rhonda Patrick, that's it, right? And she's been on the Joe Rogan show many times. I really like her. She's a nice gal. And she talks about a lot of the stuff that I talk about, but she has a PhD. I mean, she she understands this stuff better than I do on like a on a cellular level. She's like a you know a PhD in, in bioscience or <clears throat> like not exactly sure what it is, but I really like her. I like her personality. I like everything about her. She's like a nice gal, super smart. Like my wife. My wife's super smart too. Uh, let's see. Let's see, Chris. Okay, I have my daughter's graduation coming up in four weeks, and I want to look really hot. So my ex-wife. <laughs> that's pretty funny. All right, so stay with it, Chris. Then stay with what you're doing. I don't think you have to abandon the salmon. If you're only doing 1750 and you're taking in a good amount of protein, you know, just eat as healthy as you can for that 1750. And then after the four weeks, let let's. I think we should change things up with you, you know, and let's really put some muscle on and 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 uh, maybe take two weeks off right after then. Maybe more than just a week. And don't you can't be afraid if you gain a couple pounds, even three four pounds over the two weeks. It'd probably be good for you. I just don't want you to get caught. You know what I find? I've seen this. Oh my God! I've seen this so many times over the years, and it happens. It just happened to one of my. I may have mentioned it, it happened to one of my clients' um, daughter, who's like a vegetarian. It seems like when you do these extreme things, they work so good in the beginning. Even like the carnivore diet. And I've talked this in the past too with Paul Saladino. You know, he was. You know, he's the guy who wrote the carnivore code. Doctor, much smarter than me. I think he has two different medical degrees. He went 100% carnivore. 
was doing great for a couple of years. Then started having issues with electrolytes, not feeling good. But he's a really active guy. He surfs like multiple hours a day. He lives in Costa Rica. Um, other clients and friends of mine know they go vegetarian. They feel great for like a couple of years. They're losing weight. They love it. They say, oh my God. And plus psychological, I think your perception of whatever you decide to do is just as important as doing it. Like if you think that eating vegetables are healthy and eliminating meat is bad and psychologically it puts you in such a good place you just feel wonderful and everything but then all of a sudden you know you've, you've been a vegetarian a vegan for two two and a half years all of a sudden you're a doctor you're, you're tired you know you're, you're anemic your iron is too low your b12 is too low same thing with this like and i don't want to throw you off chris but you know you know you're losing weight everything's going great but all of a sudden you, you're two years in you're, you're not that long yet i think you're only about you're about eight months or so right He's done so well. All of a sudden, you're two years in and doing these aggressive strategies, and all of a sudden, you know, you, you are low in potassium, you're low in magnesium, you're low in iron, you're low in certain vitamins, minerals, and nutrients, and then you, you kind of get caught. So it's, I think it's a great idea to, from time to time, just like I'm talking about my other client where I put him on a typical, I think you can do 16 8 your whole life, two meals a day and a protein shake, and not be deficient in anything if you're eating good. You know, it's good to, to you know, take a step back and say, let me just chill out, eat maintenance calories for a while, make sure I'm taking in great nutrition, make sure I'm not deficient in anything, and then you can always jump back in. You're never gonna be uh, overweight again, Chris, you're not. I can just tell. You're too smart, you're too, you did so well, you're gonna be great, but I, 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 but I hear what you're trying to say for the, uh, <laughs> you know, for the, um, for the upcoming graduation. It's nice, you know, stay with what you're doing for the next four weeks, but then we should, we should change things up a little bit. Uh, thanks for the advice, Mike. But no, I appreciate it too, Chris. You're great. I mean, you're the best. Here we go. So this, this is like another meal I had this week. I love this meal. I, I really do love cheap cuts of meat. See, I'm also not a person, when I say red meat, and I know this guy's also smarter than me too, like Dr. Eric Berg and, and um, who's the other guy? Dr. Ken Berry, who's, he's kind of more carnivore and he's eating, like he always talks about eating fatty cuts of meat because when you're carnivore, it's hard to even eat enough calories. I'm still a little concerned about saturated fat especially if, if you have certain genotypes, if you have that APO, you know, genotype. I like lean cuts of meat, multiple reasons. First of all, I want to keep my calories down, and it is so inexpensive. But if you notice, I did a couple of videos. I just filmed a new one. I think I'll be ma me making this meal. I tenderize it. I take a fork. I chop up the meat a little bit before I make it. It only takes two minutes. You know, I salt it. I put a little olive oil on top of it, and it tastes so good, and it's so inexpensive. I think this was like two ninety nine a pound. Once again, I have my probably my 10 ounces. If you notice, most of my meals, I like to go 60, 65 grams of protein. So I'll do a lunch and a dinner like that. That gives me like 120, 130 grams of protein. And then I throw in um, a protein shake or protein bar in the middle. It gives me up to 150, 155. That's pretty much what I eat every single day. And I love this meal. I mean, this takes a little bit longer, but I, I filmed this whole thing. I think I'm gonna release this tomorrow, me making this meal. I don't know how, I, I guess since I'm not really a chef, um, I know some people like the videos. I may start getting more into that. We'll see. These are my stewed tomatoes. I love stewed tomatoes because I always pronounce that wrong. It's, it's the lipocaine. That's great for your prostate if you're a man, which is really good. I took like, you know, once, maybe six or seven tomatoes. I like to take the seeds out, and this sticks in my head about Dr. Gundry always said about the lectins, like the nightshade vegetables. The lectins can be kind of toxic on the body. So I, and, and the lectins are in the seeds. So I remove the seeds. I made this in five minutes, just extra virgin olive oil, a little salt, pepper, a little garlic powder right on top of the stove while I'm cooking the steak. I like to give myself like a 15 minute max time to like prep and get a, you know, get a meal done. Once again, my avocado and blueberries. This is just like an ideal meal. Maybe someone like Alexandria, she wants, she, I know she's only doing a thousand calories a day, so she can probably get by with maybe just maybe one and a half instead of going with 10 ounce, five ounces of, of, um, of steak. You know, taking in 35, 40 grams of pro protein instead of my 60. I mean, you know, half an avocado instead of a whole avocado. You know, the stewed tomatoes are almost like free calories, and the blueberries, I still think she could do. That's how I would modify for a gal or someone who just wants to cut back on the calories a little bit. Let's see, I got a whole bunch of meals today. Yeah, I did a, this is a video I just released. I think I released this yesterday. I actually did pretty good on, on, on all platforms. You know, this is just such an easy meal to make. Like this is, I talk about, this is just my chicken thighs. Once again, I'm at, at about 10 ounces, 65 grams of protein. I season this up, but I love curry spices. I put curry seasoning, a little salt, pepper, I think a little oregano. I bake it in the oven for 25, 45 minutes. Depending upon, see, I, I like to flatten out and sometimes I even pound the, the chicken thighs so they cook quicker, you know, so they're nice and thin. 
so it only takes 45 minutes. You could keep them in there for longer if you want to get all the grizzle out. Sometimes I cut away some of the excess fat too. Once again, my avocado, which I never miss a day. Maybe if, I, if I'm traveling, I miss an avocado. And then an orange, I, they were on sale in my supermarket once again, only a dollar for the orange. Or oh, maybe it was even less, I think two for a dollar fifty. You know, relatively low calorie, super nutritious meals. Took you know, took me no time to make. And when I do the chicken, I literally may make two pounds of it. I think that was leftover chicken from the um, from the night before. You know, so this this is this is just simple. I like to use the term. This is everyday eating. You know, when you watch all these cooking channels and you watch these, even other people who are real chefs and they make these pretty dishes. You just, but unfortunately, I think it's so unhealthy, most of it. <laughs> Even though it may taste great, it's really a cheat. This is what I would call everyday eating. If you eat like this 90% of the time, you're never gonna run into trouble, you're never gonna get caught, you're not gonna be overweight, you're gonna be healthy. Moderate carb, high fiber, super nutritious, simple, simple eating. And save the fancy meals for once a week, a couple times, you know, on special occasions, things like that. Let's see what we got, I think there's another chicken one. You know, couldn't be any simpler, right? I just grilled some chicken breast, you know, so it's maybe a little lower in calories than the chicken thighs because it's less fat. Arugula salad, I think there's a kale and arugula salad. I always go with different colors, different vitamins, different minerals, different nutrients. I cut up some yellow and red peppers. Once again, my avocado. Since this meal is so lean, I'm, I don't remember, but I'm sure I did. Like it, it, when the meal is very lean, I will season the um, salad with EVOO. And every tablespoon is 140 calories, so you gotta keep an eye on it, and some balsamic vinegar, you know, which is great. Let's see what John's got to say. Mike, protein bar recommendations. Yeah, my two favorites, and I talked about that in the past, I like the no cow protein bar. And the reason why I like the no cow is the net carbs are very low, meaning that there's about 25, 26 grams of carbs, depending upon the flavor, but it has 15, 16, 17 grams of fiber. So how you figure out net carbs is that you take total carbohydrates minus fiber. So it's a very low net carb bar. Plus it's always about 20, 21 grams of protein, somewhere around 200 calories. So 200 calories with 21 grams of protein, really good. Plus they, I think they taste great, really satisfying. It's a vegan bar, meaning that they, that's why I say no cow. It's a complete protein, it's a pea and brown rice, so it has all the essential amino acids, which I think is great. And, um, which were, and it's dairy free. So some people, if you're, a, if, if you're a vegan, you don't want to take in any dairy. The only downside of these bars, like we talked about this before, I think Chris even mentioned it, is that it does have sugar alcohols in it, seven or eight grams. And there was that recent study saying how sugar alcohols can lead to blood clots. I mean, I know it sounds pretty bad, right? But when you look at the research and you look at the study, and I'm just referencing other people who took a deep dive into it, like Peter Atiga took a deep dive. And he was saying that which really like 30 grams and he still thinks that maybe even then it may not be so bad. So seven grams of a sugar alcohol and the sugar alcohol is that ethyl, I think I'm pronouncing it better this time, ethyl. It's like an artificial sweetener. It's like, it's kind of like, to, well, like monk fruit and stevia, that's like a natural sweetener, but it's like sugar alcohol just makes things taste, taste sweet without adding calories. So that's the only downside of the no cow bar. The other one I like is the Quest. Like my, like I eat an Ocal bar I'm more. My wife loves the Quest bar, and the Quest is a very similar profile in that it has um, 25 grams of carbs, but once again, 15, 16 grams of fiber. So the net carbs are very low in a Quest bar, but the protein source is um, is whey. It's not a whey protein isolate, which I prefer. So your whey protein isolate strips out all the fat and the carbohydrates and you're just left with like the amino acids. It's a protein, it's more of a concentrate. So you're getting some fat, you're getting, see, I'm lactose intolerant, so I have a harder time with the whey protein concentrate. I like an isolate. So sometimes I can eat a Quest bar, it doesn't bother me at all. Every now and then I eat a Quest bar, I feel like it upsets my stomach a little bit. My wife loves them. Um, I think they're both great. And I think the uh, sugar alcohols are about the same in a Quest bar as they are in a uh, no cow bar. But they're so easy. The reason why I like both of them is that you can buy them without the chocolate on the outside so that they, they don't melt. You know, in the summertime, you can go on a walk or you can go on a hike, go to the beach, take some Quest and NoCal bars in the cool, you're not going to have an issue with it. But I, I think they're both great, John. I think they're both great bars. Let's see, Alexandra. Okay, this is Alexandra. Um, I tried combining my shakes and my and meals last week, and I don't think it's working for me. I'm, I'm returning to three meals, two snacks, everything. That You know, Alexandra, I think that's totally, totally fine. If that works for you, you're doing so good, a thousand calories, 
And I still think you're sticking to just a specific eating window, right? You're not eating those like six meals over 16 hours, right? You give me a, was it an eight hour eating window? Or was it even a 12 hour eating window? I bet you'll be okay with a thousand calories. I think that's fine. And this is a good point. And I, I even though, I, I, that's a great question. I'm glad Alexander brought that up. Because even though I, I am a big believer, and I say this over again, an intermittent fasting, time restricted eating, and I do think there's, oh, there are health benefits to being in a fast state for 16 hours, if not longer from time to time, like what, what Chris is doing, a 36 hour fast is great for autophagy, you know, cell cleansing, rejuvenation, good for reversing insulin resistance because you, you're increasing insulin sensitivity. But I think the main benefit of time-restricted eating, intermittent fasting, you'll give yourself a smaller eating window, is that most people are just going to eat less, be in a calorie deficit without having to count calories. But since Alexandra is doing so well, she's eating 1,000 calories a day, good nutrition within the 1,000 calories, taking good protein, she finds that it works better for her because we talked about this last week, to instead of just doing like two or three meals, she likes eating three meals and three snacks. It just, it, it, it seems like it works better for her to only eat a thousand calories, and I think that's great. So you don't have to intermittent fast, you don't have to time restricted eat. If you wanna just straight up count calories, you know, taking enough protein, enough vitamins, minerals, and nutrients within whatever deficit you're in, you can do just as well as anyone who's time restricted eating or intermittent fasting. I just know because I talked about that's how I got really into intermittent fasting, time restricted eating. It was my biggest frustration as a trainer, getting people to eat less. Like people come to my gym, they said they think they're going to work out, and like start losing tons of weight. And you only, I mean, how many calories are you burning an hour? Even if I work someone out too hard, five hundred calories maybe. Most people even less. What's five hundred calories, right? A slice of pizza and a can of Coke, right? You can, you can. Like, I really do believe that you can't out-exercise a bad diet. You just can't. Calories are so important. So I found that I've had, the, I've had the best success with people over the years. And I've been doing this, I'm 60, like I say, I've been doing this 35 years, if not longer. I've had the best success with people, putting people in a calorie deficit, just telling them, you know, why don't you do 16 day? Why don't you just eat with an eight-hour eating window? If you can just eat, or I, I, lately I've been just to people, just eat two meals any anytime you want. Just eat two meals a day, try to spread them out, throw a protein bar, protein shake in the middle, and you're gonna do great. You're gonna be in a deficit without counting calories. And, and you know, but I think, I think that's great, Alan, and I think it's totally okay for you to do that. Let's pick another meal here. I think I got a few more, I did a whole bunch. Let's see what we got. Ooh, I love this one too. This is kind of a smaller, but you know, it's interesting because I, I really miss this. I did this again recently. I really miss these, these salmon fish eggs. Once again, Chris, this is something you may want to fool around with too, but it's expensive. Like if you want to cut out the salmon, because these aren't too high in calories and you want to take in some like, you know, some roast of salmon roll fish eggs, something like that. So I took some salmon roll fish eggs cut inside of an avocado, which is great because the saltiness of, of the fish eggs inside the avocado. I was doing this a lot and I was buying them at Whole Foods. But then Whole Foods got rid of the brand that's, I mean, you can spend $100 on a little container or you can spend $14 on a little container. Whole Foods had this brand that I loved that was on sale all the time for like $9.99. I was buying them like every day. Then Whole Foods stopped carrying them and now they put their own name on their own version of it. And it's just not as good. They're more expensive, they're not as good. So I haven't been doing it, but I did it this week. I really like it. But I love doing that, the, the, the salmon roll fish eggs inside the avocado. Strawberries, couple of eggs, a little piece of salmon. This is a nice, a great, perfect small meal. I can say this is for a gal, a guy. You know, it just depends. You can increase the the, the quantity if, if you're a little bigger person. But I think this is a good, that's just a great, super healthy, well-rounded meal. Let's see what Chris got to say. Okay, it's it's okay to be expensive. I'm really investing in my health and myself. Best investment, best investment I've made is my health. I totally agree. I seem to spend all my money on on food. It's unreal. I mean. I don't really like going out to eat though and doing that because I can't, I, you know, when you go out to eat, even though even though things may taste great, it's so, so few restaurants use the good oils. They're all using canola oil and some, I mean, all, all the high oxidative type oils, they, they, the seed oils, and even if it tastes good, they, they make everything sugar, they make everything sweet, tasty and salty, and you know, it's really hard for me to eat out. I got a couple places that I love, but most of the time I'd much rather eat home. I'd rather go out for a drink or something instead, you know? Ooh, it looks good. Oh, I'm glad you like it. That's great. Yeah, some of the meals, people get on my case to saying I'm showing too much fish because I kind of leave the pescatarian and I do eat a lot of salmon. I do eat like, you know, smoked salmon and um, sardines and things like that. But uh, it's just my style of eating. I really like it. Okay. 
I found that my blood type, um, a I'm not sure what you mean by that, a alcohol, alcohol, all. I found that my blood type, some bit, some bit. I'm, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Maybe I'm just maybe that's an abbreviation. I can't figure it out. Okay, let's see. Let's see beside the fish eggs. I think they have another steak here. Oh yeah, this is one. You know, this is one I made this a while ago, and I duplicated the same exact meal because I love this so much. I may have overcooked it a little bit, but this is filet mignon. It was on sale like like a week or so ago. I love it. A nice. This may even be more than ten ounces. This may maybe like twelve ounces. Once again, like you know, I always eat. I love arugula because arugula is naturally high in nitrates, which convert to nitric oxide, which is so good for blood flow. It vasodilates blood vessels. It's great. I, I mean, I love it. So I have, um, and this I probably added a little bit of EVO, oil and balsamic vinegar. So we got a nice, nice steak on top, seared it. How I like to do my steak is sometimes I overdo it. I may, I may have pushed this one a little bit. I like to sear it quickly, then I like to cover it on top of the stove, and then slowly cook it. So if you cut this open, even though it's seared, the center will be just a little bit red. And once again, the oranges have been on sale, so I went with an orange. And there's even blueberries in there too. It, this is just a great meal. It could be a lunch, could be a dinner. You can't go wrong. You know, you can't go wrong with it. Let's see. Here. Oh, hey, Nelson. What's up, dude? Hey, thanks for showing up, Nelson. So you don't eat so you don't eat um amazing starch like, like rice, sweet potatoes, or corn. You know, that's how I eliminate most of my calories, I have to say. L lately, I don't know if I have a corn in the picture, but corn's been coming at the seasons, and my wife loves corn, so I did have corn one night this week. Sweet potatoes I do eat from time to time because they are high in fiber, vitamin C, a lot of good things in sweet potatoes. But when I mean starches, rice, very rarely, bread, very rarely. That's how I, I eliminate the grains and that's how I keep my calories under control. But I still get the fiber from eating avocado, avocado every day. And avocado is like 17 grams of fiber, 16 grams of fiber. I eat tons of vegetables like the string beans and the broccoli and the cauliflower. I, I'm, I'm going to start showing more of my dinners. You know, uh, Nelson, if you saw my dinners, because when it comes to filming these things, sometimes I feel like, oh my God, I can't eat a meal without make, taking a, making a movie of like what I'm eating. I generally film and take pictures of my lunches, like right, like my post-workout lunch, and it's light out, and I do it in my like dining room area. In the evening, my, I'm here with my wife, and she, you know, we make a meal, she makes a meal, and I got to go like set up the, the camera, and my wife gets on my case, what are you doing? It's getting cold. But I do eat like sweet potatoes occasionally. Um, on a cheat day, which I, I, sometimes I do it on Saturdays, I may buy, buy that Arthur Avenue Italian bread, which I love. But if you look at the ingredients, all it says is like, you know, you know, flour, yeast, salt, like it's really simple ingredients. It doesn't have that big list of ingredients you would see in like Wonder Bread. Um, and I do believe Nelson in, and this is a little de de bit debatable, I do believe in that whole resistant starch argument. And I don't know if it's an argument debate. I mean, some people feel, and I've heard people like Dr. Gundry say this, and I've even watched the guy, two different guys, who, who, who kind of a cool thing what they do. I've talked about this in the past. They wear those 24-hour glucose um, monitors. You know, you put them on your arm, that little needle goes in you, it merges blood sugar. And um, because p people talk about resistant starches, some people believe in it, some people don't. I think the doctor, Ken Berry, doesn't believe in it. I think there's something to it. Like if you took white rice or if you took white potatoes and you refrigerate them the day before, they chemically change and they become a resistant starch, meaning that you will not digest all the calories within a cold potato or cold rice when it's refrigerated for 24 hours. So not only are the calories down, it's not going to give you that spike in blood sugar. So sometimes I'll do that. I even did it showed a couple of weeks ago. Like I love sushi. I, I used to eat it way too much. Every now and then, plus it's expensive too. I know Chris, we're talking about money with food. Every now and then I'll have like a salmon sushi roll. But what I will do is, and I, I, I'm not buying it from a fancy restaurant. I'm just buying it from my local Italian deli. They have a, a nice sushi counter there. I like the guys there. They're really nice. I'll buy the day before. I'll refrigerate it to make it a resistant starch. And I eat it the next day. But if you look at my diet, that, that's what some people look at my meals and say, no carbs, Mike. You don't need any carbs. But when you think about it, when you look at these meals that I'm talking about, and here's an I think there's an example of it. There's tons of carbs here because those are golden beets, which are all carbs, and that's spinach, which is all carbs. But people don't look at vegetables and fruits as carbs. When they see when they think carbs, they think like bread and rice, and they think more starches 
Nelson, like what you're talking about. But And once again, I don't really think it's necessarily bad. Definitely not a sweet potato. Definitely not, um, you know, more of, 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 uh, of starchy type things. But, but, you know, even white potatoes are high in potassium, have a decent amount of fiber. I prefer sweet potatoes because there's even more nutrition. White rice, not much to it, you know, kind of just like eating sugar. But if your calories are in line and you love it, I think you, I think you can have it. But if you're someone like, say, someone more like Chris or who's turned around type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance, and I know myself, even though when I was in my 20s and 30s, I ate a very high-carb diet, exactly what you're talking about. I was in the bodybuilding. Um, I always kept my protein high. I ate tons of carbs, tons of potatoes, tons of rice, rice cakes, you know, like tons of things like that. And I looked good, but I have to say I was hungry all the time because I kept kept in spiking insulin. And my blood work wasn't as good as it is now. My HDLs were inside. My tri- tri- triglycerides were higher when I was eating all those carbs, even though I looked good. So I find my that I'm so much less hungry now. I feel my blood work is better. Even though I'm older, I think I can maintain like lower body fat levels are much better. I probably hover around 12%. If I if I tighten up, I can really see my abs and get down to like 10%, which I'll probably do for the summertime or before my birthday. But I do, that's how I eliminate, I'm glad you brought that up, that's how I eliminate calories out of my diet, but not eating bread, but not eating rice, but not eating pasta, and I love pasta. Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to Italy again. We, we have a wedding in Italy. My wife's family's like someone's getting married. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'll, I'll probably be drinking wine, eating pasta in Italy, you know. But my calories probably won't even be that high because, you know, in Italy, you don't eat breakfast. You drink a little espresso. You probably, I'll probably eat one good meal a day, you know, in Italy, and I'll be walking like crazy in Italy. But um, I was good. I'm glad you asked that question. That was great. I found my blood type that Al A L E V. I don't know why I'm not understanding that. I found my blood type that. I'm I'm so sorry, um, um, Madam Party Girl. I'm not sure what you mean. You know by that. Are you talking about the blood type diet? Is that what you're saying? Okay. Let's see what she means. Okay, okay, this is it. I found that my blood type, that avocado wasn't a good idea. Oh, yeah, no, I understand that. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, avoc- it's interesting because I eat an avocado every day and I'm always talking about them and posting pictures of them. A lot of people um, like have issues with avocados. Not that they don't, don't, some don't like the taste. A lot of people, they're allergic to them and doesn't agree with them. Maybe it is a blood type thing, but I get that a lot. People are always asking me what can substitute for an avocado, but I got to say it's really hard. I would lean more towards just going with high fiber type vegetables, but you just don't get the monounsaturated fat. It's really hard, I think, to like you like a 17 grams of fiber is a lot. I think for maybe there's 300 calories in an avocado, which people can say that's kind of on the high side, but to get 17 grams of fiber, even from like broccoli or something, you gotta eat a lot. You know that's why I love avocado so much. But if it doesn't agree with you, it doesn't agree with you. Nothing you can do about it, right? Hey Gwen, good. Thanks for showing up. Great to see you here. I eat tacos here. Got to have those tortillas. Yeah, no, but it's funny. There's so many that people love. I know people love tacos, but there's so many different types of tacos shells you can get now, right? You can get them that are like high in protein, low in calories. Just try to stay away from the tra- the traditional ones unless you love it and have it every now and then. Try to go with the more the low-cal ones if you can, for sure. Oh, thanks. Are you on this? Oh, no, thanks, Nelson. I appreciate it. I like the cool-looking dog, too. Well, wow. incredible dog. Okay, this is... um. Madam Party Girl, I looked up what foods that were good for my blood and blood. I just, there was that book. I ne- I read it many, many years ago. It was big. That was more, it was big, literally probably in the 80s, more like that COVID barely fit or fat. That's when like the high carb diets were really popular. There was that blood type diet book and people still talk about it to this day that it really worked for them. I think I was the blood type that was really good for animal protein. Um, I'm not sure, but I probably should read that book again. I bet maybe there's even new versions of it. Maybe you're talking about a new version of it. Okay, let's see. Facebook user. Um, the way resistance starts was explained to me when treating um, SIBO that it doesn't get digested in the small intestine and would make its way to the large intestine where it's, where it's populated back, back, bacteria. We might be saying small things. I use green banana. Oh, that's good. Yeah, the green banana powder. That's great. I think that's great too. Yeah, I know. Become it comes. A resistance start kind of becomes. I, I mean, you can almost look at it like um, like fiber, right? It almost becomes like a prebiotic in a way. 
where it's digested in the small intestine, like a biorate, like it feeds the good bacteria in the, in the small intestine. Kind of interesting. That's a great way to look at it. Thanks. Okay, Chris. What's your email, Mike? The last few emails I haven't, I, I've sent haven't made it. Oh, that's interesting. You know what? It's funny because Susan was singing that too. I had trouble finding her email. Maybe it's all going into my junk. It's interesting. I was using this web designer guy and he made it so complicated. Like it had a, you know, I hate when you get that you want to try to email someone and you got to pick up all like, you know, they, they show you the pictures and you got to say, okay, click on the three bridges and then it takes you five chances that, you know, so maybe it's all getting messed up. I would go with either two of these emails, either MikeColaFitness at Hotmail.com or MikeColaFitness at Gmail.com. I think those are my two main ones. You can try that. But, you know, I emailed him a couple of weeks ago. And I wanted him to remove all the restrictions off of it because I don't get that much volume on, on, on my website and the emails. But I've been getting a lot. But I do sometimes I do get a hundred emails in a day, you know, from Instagram, from TikTok. I get a lot from TikTok, like just tons. I got to figure out a way to do it. But try that. But I'll try to look for it. I'm, and, and Susan's, I'm, I miss some of her emails too. And I, I, I got to contact you, Susan. I don't know if you're if you're here. Maybe you're the one who's do, doing the Facebook. Um, could see, but I know you were talking about that. Um, I know, I think we have to connect. I think you said you, you're free um, in the evening, which is good for me too. I'm free just about any evening, maybe after like seven o'clock or something. Let's see. Oh, fog, yeah, avocados are high in that, yeah. Okay. Oh, it is, oh, that is you, Susan. Okay, cool, okay, good. Okay, so hold the, uh, yeah, let's see if we can connect this week, Susan, one night this week, maybe after like seven o'clock if that works for you. Let's see, let me see if I have some other ones here. Oh, that's that same thing. I think I got a couple more. Yeah, also people are getting on my case, like once again, Chris, with the money. I would say, Mike, every meal, yeah, but I, I can't afford to buy salmon. I can't afford, so I just, simply, you can do something like this. And I love guacamole with um with uh, blueberries. Just up, just your most inexpensive um beef, chicken. I go with 90% lean, you know, hamburgers. Probably my 10 ounces right there. And some people even say, you know what an incredible diet book is to read? Dr. Ted Needleman. I don't know if you ever read it. called The P.E. Diet. I, you know, I, I think I'm, I'm, my diet's probably the most similar to his style of eating. And he's a he's an MD. I, I like everything he says all the time. He's, he's so on the mark with everything. And he talks about he almost prefers chopped meat over like steak, even expensive type steaks. Because, you know, when you grind up the chopped meat, you're getting some connective tissue, you're getting some tongue, you're getting some other things. Maybe the collagen is probably a little bit higher in, higher in chopped meat even, which is kind of good. Instead of eating like a steak or something. Okay, all right, okay. Is avocado eggs and salmon too much fat in one meal? You know, I don't think so. It depends on, you know, your whole your whole diet. I look at it like this. I don't I don't track fat calories. I like like the things I like to track, I like to track I like to track total calories, whether I'm in a deficit or a maintenance. I like to track protein to make sure I'm eating enough protein, which for me is maybe 150 grams a day. I like to make sure I'm taking in enough fiber. A minimum of 35 grams. I'm probably more at 50, especially if I do a no cal protein. But I'm probably over 50 because that guarantees me that I'm eating, you know, an avocado, I'm eating vegetables. And if I'm just eating like avocados and 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 what you would call it, and like um, salmon and sardines, a good amount of my calories are gonna come from fat, but it's whole natural food. Like I'm not adding fat necessarily to my meals. The only fat that I add is maybe a little bit of extra virgin olive oil when I'm sauteing vegetables, or maybe I put a little bit on the steak when I sear a steak, or maybe if, for example, if I'm having sardines that are not packed in olive oil, I may add a little olive oil if I throw it on top of an arugula salad. But as long as I don't go over with my calories, I don't mind that a good percentage of my calories are coming from fat. So I would say it depends on your whole plan. Like if you're eating enough fiber, you're taking good protein, and if you're keeping your calories in line, I think you're okay, but if, for example, if if fats are bringing are, are, are pushing you too high in calories, then I would say cut back, you know. So that, that, that I hope that answers your question. Okay. Okay. Do you have any ideas on foods that are good for hair and skin care? Yeah, I would definitely then go with the collagen. I would probably take a collagen. My wife does it. I, I do it on and off. I would do, um. see, all different proteins have it in different amino acid profile. That's why collagen protein is so good. You can drink bone broth. See, collagen's high in glycine and proline. Those amino acids are great for skin, hair, and nails. You know, you can take a supplement too, but um, I would say any any type of collagen. You know, years ago, 
you know, we ate differently. If I even I met my grandparents, so I brought this up in the past too. My grandmother, my grandfather, I'm more on my mother's side, when they would eat like chicken, they would gnaw like they came they grew up in the Great Depression. They would gnaw on the end of bones. They'd eat the cartilage right off of a chicken bone. I would go to the house as a kid, they give me like a chicken, you know, a chicken leg. I eat the, just the chicken. I put the leg back, my grandma would grab it and said, Mike, you didn't even eat this. The, the, the whole meal is here. She gnawed down and break open, suck the bone marrow out of the bones. Years ago, we would get a lot more collagen in our, in our diet. So collagen is a great thing for skin, hair, and nails. So I would do that, um, Madam Party Girl. I mean, you can do a supplement. They're relatively inexpensive. You know, you can go like Vital Proteins or Garden of Life. I like their um, collagen supplement. You can do one scoop or half a scoop, just 10 grams of collagen protein powder. It's very inexpensive. I think it's great. I think, like I talked about this in the past too. I used to get cracks in my nails. Started like seven, eight years ago. And I think I think my diet was low in collagen. I started doing like just one scoop of a collagen protein powder. Within a few weeks, the cracks in my nails went away. My wife or girlfriends do it, take a collagen protein powder. They, they think their skin, hair, and nails look better. My father on the hair salon for 48 years. You know, he was he, he was he, he used to sell some different supplements and that, but I think collagen is he likes the collagen too. I think collagen's like really the best for that. Oh, thanks so much. No, I really appreciate it. I appreciate you you showing up. Hey, let's see what Jeff's got to say. Okay, if okay, if every day could be Sunday, I think I could lose a lot of weight. So Jeff says if he can do OMAD every day, he thinks he can lose a lot of weight. I'm having my coffee now, then tennis, three to four thirty. Then after I cool down, I will have one big meal. Always weight lo weight loss. Yeah, I know, I know, Jeff. If you can, even if you can just sneak in in one more day, maybe on Wednesdays, you do a Wednesday Sunday OMAD day, that would be great. I mean, it's like that's what I say. I always find people, even people when they um, in clients of mine too, are always struggling with their weight. You know, the, you know they're good for a little bit, but when you look at, you have to look at it like month to month. If you're in a calorie deficit at the end of the month, you're going to be lighter and your body fat's going to be lower, you know, as opposed to just like being really good and then, you know, having like a few cheat days. It's like month to month, quarter to quarter. That's where the long term progress comes. So I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying, Jeff. Okay. Would you eat chicken thighs on a daily basis, tied up chicken breast? I don't know about a daily basis just because you probably get tired of that too. And there is more calories in the chicken thigh. I like to mix it up, but I think you can if you if you love chicken thighs. You know, you can trim the fat a little bit. You know, maybe you can cook them a little bit more well done and let the fat sit and, you know, you know, burn off a little bit. I think you can, definitely. Like I said, calories, protein, fiber. You know, if long, as long as your calories are in line, you, you're okay, right? Let's see what we got. I think I got a couple more meals. Oh, maybe just one more. Let's see what we got. Let me close this one out. Oh yeah, this is another one of my classics. This is a typical. And one thing I want to give people ideas of the smaller meals. I always like to show my sardines. I eat sardines all the time. Can of sardines, 21 grams of protein. I wanted more protein, so I had a little bit of smoked salmon there. Once again, smoked salmon is expensive, but I just absolutely love it. Strawberries, avocado. This is a nice, good small meal. More of a kind of a lunch type thing. You know? Perfect. Let's see. Okay, again, thank you very much. It's on the uh, charcoal bar. That sounds good. Barbecue. I just be a little just 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 be a, just be a little careful with the barbecue sauce if you're making them like that. If you can avoid the barbecue sauce and just season them up, season them up like I would with like my curry. I love curry spice. That's probably my favorite seasoning. Even just salt, pepper, or anything. Even a little soy sauce, something like that. And try to avoid because the barbecue sauce is going to be all all sugar, unless you make your own. Even ketchup is pretty. It's it's, it's pretty high in sugar. All right, there we go. I think this went, went, went okay today, kind of an off topic. All right, guys, I'm getting ready to take my walk. Any other questions about anything before I run? I, I was gonna do. I was gonna do again. I, I, was, I talked about it last week. I wanted to do today, I'll do one on sleep, but uh, maybe I'll do it next Sunday on sleep. Oh no, next Sunday. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be here next Sunday. It's possible. I think I'm gonna go. My son has a big track meet, and um, I may go visit him. I'm gonna see if my brother and my and my nephew. I would love my, you know, Johnny to come too, to go visit on my, uh, you know, to go visit my son. I think he's one of his last meets. Actually, I saw him run yesterday too, which was great. I love seeing him. So I, was, so I may or may not be here on Sunday. It depends, but unless we go Friday night and come home Saturday, or I come Saturday, I want to stay spend one night there. So I may or may not do this on Sunday, or maybe I, if I do do it, I can just do it like in the hotel room, just with my phone. We'll do a quick Q and A, something like that. I may not have some slides, but let me know. Let's see what else we got here, Gwen. 
corn tortilla is more healthy than flour. You know, you know, Gwen, I don't think there's too much difference there. I would look at the calories and look at the fiber. If one has more more fiber and less calories, I would go with that one, you know, whatever you can. But I know that make all these all these keto people and all these, um, you know, there's like low carb tortillas and there's all high protein tortillas you can buy now. I'd experiment with them. Calories are the most important thing. But I know sometimes I think you talk about it if you're taking enough protein. Maybe you wanted to try a protein tortilla. But taste is the main thing. Maybe it's a real treat. Depends how often you're having them. You know, if you're having them constantly, then I would definitely go with like a keto or a low, a low carb or something. One. But if you're just having them once a week, you know, I'd go whatever you enjoy the most on that. Happy Sunday. Oh, thanks. Good. Happy Sunday, Mike. Thanks for the best. Carb cycling would be good. Oh, yeah. Carb cycling. You know, I almost did that today. Maybe we'll do that. I like. I love the carb cycling one. Could I have some slides from two different ones that I did a while ago that I was going to use? That sounds good, Chris. I like that. I can't wait. Uh, thanks so much. Madam, let's see. Let me go with my thanks. Madam, great information. I really appreciate it. Great. Oh, good. Oh, this is good. Chris has an idea for you, Gwen. That's great. I agree with Chris. I'd also like a carb cycling video. That sounds great. I like that. Makes green. Oh, cool, cool. This is good. People are helping each other out. I love that. Margaret, thank you for your videos. I've been going back and watching your videos as I'm a new to your site. Oh, so, oh, I'm 74. Oh, that's great. So, so nice, Margaret. Thanks for showing up. Working and staying healthy. Sounds great. And it's clean eating. Sounds good. All right, guys, gals. I appreciate you showing up. This was good. A lot of fun today. I'm going to go take a walk. If you haven't walked today, right, get outside, join me. Why don't you make that a regular thing after these live streams? Let's take a walk. You know, you know, we'll, 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 we'll vibe each other in our head that we're walking together. Sounds great. All right, take care, everyone. Uh, thanks, Darlene. Carp cycling. Okay, carp cycling. Let's do it. We'll do carp cycling next week. That sounds great. All right, take care, everyone. Great to see you. Thanks for showing up. See you soon. Thanks. Thanks for the live streams. I mean, um, super chats, I mean, thanks.